question on the difference between the UK and China audience. Um, we are looking into this. Um, we do kind of understand that there are certain differences, but overall, I would say there are also quite a few similarities. We are currently looking into um, audience. We are doing audience research, which should kind of enable us to understand this. So there are quite a few challenges at the moment. The main one being, well, in the UK, uh, the lockdown and the inability to have kind of consistent access to the sites. Um, we also found out some interesting points which are still, again, related to the um, coronavirus. People are not interested, for example, or, or maybe we can say they're afraid of um, using VR equipment on site. That kind of affects our approach to design of the experience. We're now looking into using kind of phone-based AR rather than you know headsets which would have to be shared in a, a museum or a gallery and then potentially spread the virus. So, so <clears throat> the way how so what we're looking now is similar to what was discussed in the in the previous presentation. We are looking into um, the ways of enabling museum and gallery exper experiences from home or from remote um, locations. So I'm interested in the concept of kind of responsive design of immersive experiences where we would be starting from a kind of big idea of the experience and then look into how we could um, design and develop this across different platforms, um, which would mean that an experience can actually be enjoyed from home as well. Um, so we are going to be doing quite a lot of work in China. We are now looking into setting up some first um, UX workshops where we are going to speak to people and that the people are going to be children in our case, actually, in the UK. So we are working with the National Gallery uh, and we are hoping to do some um, co-design workshops with children in the UK starting in January. And then after this, uh, we would be doing similar thing in, in Shanghai in collaboration with our partner there, which is the Shanghai Museum of Science and Technology and uh, Tongji University. Uh, so the call for the production company is going is is now being planned and it should come out in January, uh, maybe even in late late December. So that's going to be uh, published through our um, Story Futures network, and the company which wins the contract is going to work with uh, the Story Lab based at Law uh, Royal Holloway. Um, in a similar way that other experiences which are part of story futures are being created. So we are looking at end of December or January. Uh, there are no restrictions on who can respond. Uh, however, there may be a certain kind of, you know, we are going to be looking at, um, you know, the, some kind of a, you know, portfolio of past work. So some, some, you know, some kind of experience of working in, the cultural industries would always be beneficial, I think. Um, we are also hoping then to engage that company into our user research so that we can co-design things um, together. That would then include the company, the researchers from university and the National Gallery. If a company is not in the SF, so that's something I would have to check and come back to you. <laughs> um, so yes, I, uh, no, so so far we have been working with the companies which are um, based in the cluster area. Um, but then I know that uh, you know some decision was made to kind of stretch into London. So I would have to double check on this and then come back to whoever is asking the question. Um, this was done in collaboration with the National Gallery. We are working with their education department and um, they suggested this is an interesting target audience for them. 
um, we're looking into educational experiences and um, our topic initially as I mentioned in the, in the presentation is to combine um, science and art we are working with the National uh, Gallery here in the Shanghai Museum of Science so that's a sort of natural link and then through a se series of workshops we, which we have done from the beginning of the project um, we decided that probably the most interesting way to go would be to combine uh, nature or the you know, science of ecology with um, content from the National Gallery, the paintings which somehow explore nature. And then uh, looking into audiences, National Gallery are quite interested to engage with uh, primary school children. So we are now close to kind of deciding that our audience are going to be kids between seven and 11 years old. Uh, so at the moment, I think I'll start from the end of this question. Uh, China seems to be much less affected by COVID at the moment. Um, our partner National Gallery reopened yesterday and that was, so there is quite a bit of disruption and overall, I think the focus on the project is not as strong as it could have been if um, there was no um, commotion caused by the pandemic. But at the same time, I think we are still quite you know, able to collaborate. We use digital channels. We did quite large workshops on Zoom, uh, which included up to 40 people at the same time between China and here. And in some ways, maybe, um, this was even easier to organize digitally than if we had to fly and uh, you know get all people to meet in the, uh, in person at the same time so i would say uh yes the covid does affect things but we are still able to progress uh, it does actually affect our choices of technology as i explained before we are now more likely to look into kind of ar rather than um, VR, which would have to be consumed through the headset. Um, so I think one of the reasons which I mentioned before that why, why we chose education is because talking to our partner in, in Shanghai, the Science Museum, they do a lot of educational content as well. So somehow we uh, found that you know meeting in that area is probably the best way forward. Um, we are still kind of trying to dig deeper into understanding the audiences. So um, I think that we'll have to wait for the next beyond to, so that I, when I can maybe share a bit more detail on this. So th the actual research um, has been affected. We are hoping to run workshops uh, in, in the UK and in China in June. That has now all built been a bit delayed. We are now, the, the, the first workshops are going to start in January. Um, we are going to work uh, online mainly. So in the UK, we are trying to work with one or two schools where we would basically link our user research with uh, a teaching session. So now, so far, we only did some speculative kind of discussions, but not really organized research. What have been our main... Uh, so I think uh, we are kind of... One, one of the main things which... We, so I would say uh, we haven't done much research, user research. We've spent a lot of time trying to develop creative briefs for the National Gallery and the Shanghai Museum, which included people from the gallery and from the museum rather than users. Um, and it took quite a bit of time to find some similarities. So the, the link between nature and ecology ecology, which I mentioned before, is where we kind of met. And we are now going to develop this into more sort of formal user research. And for user research, we are hoping to do UX workshops where we'll have people together discussing certain ideas. Because our audiences are children, uh, we are trying to link that with some school lectures. How can people... So we've done 
two or three different sessions, uh, which are mainly done through Arts and Humanities Research Council. I hope there will be other opportunities, uh, either through the Research Council or Story Futures, where we, uh, I mean, we did actually organize, there were two events, one in September, one in October, which were uh, run for the companies interested to collaborate with us and where we actually had enough, you know, more than 100 participants. Uh, we are hoping to do more of those in the future, probably more targeted to dissemination of the findings rather than pitching for the, you know, the kind of, uh, you know, promoting the tender for the for the company to get involved in design and development work. So yeah, uh, today we didn't really have much talks with other projects. After this session, there will be um, a panel where we are going to discuss um, the transnational kind of content production uh, between four other projects. Um, we did have some very basic discussions with the Connect, Mu Connected Museum project, and I hope we can um, share our, uh, you know, kind of ideas and progress a bit more in the future. So I think uh, there is a, the last question I have in my chat box is what will be our main measure of success when the project is live? Um, well, I think uh, one. So we, we we are hoping to do two different things in the project. One is to create um, some interesting new experiences. And I guess the main measure for this of, of success for this will be the number of kind of users or, you know, people kind of engaging with it. So we are going to use some kind of, uh, you know, it's probably the standard metrics in the national, which is used in the National Gallery and um, in the Shanghai Museum of Science and Technology. So we are hoping that we are going to get a number of children kind of engage with our um, experiences. And uh, besides this, we're hoping to create some, um, what we call framework to uh, help uh, this type of collaboration go, you know, kind of extending in, into the future. And obviously for this, the measures then would be uh, whether there is any continuation in terms of activity between the gallery and the museum, but also between other cultural institutions in China and the UK. I hope, so that's kind of... Okay, so I think um, we are now getting almost to the end of uh, this session, and I'll be moving to the panel, which starts at one o'clock. The panel is going to discuss, um, the topic is um, the, to kind of discuss the cultural content production in transnational context, uh, context between the UK and China. So I would like to invite you all to join us um, in that panel. Thank you.